Good day to you everyone, my name is Whistler and welcome back to Project Netherquarian. So, last time if you remember, I built our first mob exhibit, the Axolotl Tank. And these guys are just getting along swimmingly. Oh, hang on, just need to breathe. There we go, thank you door. So, I love the fact that we have these axolotls in the nether now. And I'd love to give this tank a proper exterior at some stage, but I don't really have the materials for it because the design I want to go for uses a ton of quartz, and I just don't... I don't have access to that. The quartz, I think I'm gonna need villagers. So at some stage in this episode, we'll try and make that a thing. But as I have mentioned in previous episodes, I need to expand on this water at the start of each new episode, or this Project Nether Aquarium series isn't gonna do what I want it to at all. <laughs> so this time, I think we'll expand by about five blocks in each direction, and we'll also change it up a little bit. We'll do this one in a bit of a montage format. So, on that note, let's begin. And welcome back everyone! I hope you enjoyed that montage of me flooding the nether a little bit more. And it may only be 10 blocks extra space, 5 in each direction, but this water cube in the nether feels so much bigger already. This is gonna get huge, fast! <laughs> now, I have come across a few issues with the water not quite flooding how I want it to, and it's usually because of areas like this glowstone, so I need to remove these obstacles in order to make the the water flood and form the sources uh, properly, I guess. So let's just let that go. Oh yes, that is satisfying. <laughs> now I will just admit that I've only really flooded the top part of the nether. The bottom half here I have these falling water streams, and I've got this massive cavern that I need to take care of, but I need to remove all of the trees in here as well. So I think they're preventing the water sources from falling properly down here. But that's a problem for future me. Now I wanted to just replace these torches with bottom slabs, because hoglins have been spawning. You might have noticed that I've had a few soglin issues on the other side of the portal. Sometimes they come through, that's the terrifying part when I'm trapped in an enclosed space. So yeah, 
Zoglin shall be an issue no more. Now, I mentioned a villager breeder earlier, and the location that I would like to have it is down this corridor a little bit. We'll have it sort of embedded within the netherrack, because it's not really a permanent solution. The idea of Project Nether Aquarium is that each mob has its own exhibit, and I want villagers to also have their own exhibit. So, for the villager breeder, we'll set up a couple of farms as well, like a carrot farm and a potato farm. We'll just sort of hide them away in the netherrack. Oh god, that wasn't a good noise. Yep, Zoglins. Okay. Okay. I, I thought that would be a thing. Okay, this is this is only the last time. <laughs> this is the last time I have to deal with them. Can I get inside the mine? No, there's another one. <laughs> if I can get inside my mine, I can run away and sleep and also despawn them, hopefully. There we go. Excellent. Let's go down this staircase and hopefully get rid of these fellas. <laughs> There we go, sleepy time. Uh, wh what's going on here? Come across the edge of the world. <laughs> I think that's an Optifine issue. I'm still in one of the old previews for 1.17, and I noticed that they've. I know that they've patched this bug since. They made a note of that on Twitter, and I just haven't updated yet. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, they're going through the portal. No, there's. Three boys here. Three Zoglins. Oh, one down. No, no, please don't. Lag, no, please don't. One left. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, I was not expecting that. I, I, I thought I successfully despawned them, but oh my goodness. That was close. Uh, that won't happen again, though. That, that's that's the good thing. <laughs> oh, too close for comfort, though. Oh, dear. So, here is the location that I want to have my villager breeder. And it's going to have, like, a two-block centre, which is probably going to be a mistake, but it's what we're going to go for. And I'd quite like to have the villager breeder in the centre, and then a carrot farm on one side, and a potato farm on the other. And to be honest, these farms don't belong in the nether whatsoever. Like, crop farms need water for the soil to stay hydrated. And that's something I'm still going to be able to take advantage of. Auto crop farms in the nether. Who would have thought of such a thing? So, for our villager breeder, I think we're going to have beds in this room over here. And we'll have two farmers farming crops, and they will breed with each other. And then, when they have babies... The babies will run over trapdoors, and they'll fall into a water stream where I can take them somewhere else. We'll just put some trapdoors here to stop the villagers from being able to escape the adult ones. And the babies will fall through here. Won't know what hit them. <laughs> and of course I need to actually dig the collection system for the babies as well. And I'll just bring them over to the center of the room for now. Now, one thing I would also like to do is to give myself a proper source of bone meal. <laughs> so, let's create a bone meal machine. Because I have been gathering an absolute ton of nether warp blocks while I've been chopping down the nether trees trying to make way for water. So, I thought we could try and get some bone meal out of that stuff. So, let's just get the nether warp out of there and plop it in the chests. There we go. Now, of course, water streams don't work without water, so I'm going to need to bring it over from the 0, zero location. So, this is going to be the coordinates that I need to bring the water to. And we'll bring it over the top, I think. Just dig a hole for us to make our way to. <laughs> Kelp! Burn meal. Break. Kelp! Burn meal. Break. Kelp! Burn meal. Break. Oh, this takes a while. <laughs> There we go. I think this is it. Just break off the one. And then we should have a water stream going straight down here to where I hope to have my villagers. Ah. Mm -hmm. That is an issue. <laughs> that was not what I expected when I came down here. <laughs> How do I kill these guys? Right, I've dug a hole on the other side of the collection system. Let's draw the hoglins over here. Get out of the way, piglin. You're not sacrificing me. 
Right, okay, let's kill these guys from here. They can't reach me. Uh, no, they're not angry with me. They're just making noises. <laughs> and then for the collection system, I can break this trap door, place some kelp there, break this trap door, um, and we'll place some kelp there as well. Can I have that? Yes, thank you very much. And there we go. Now I can replace the trap doors. And I should have some water streams where I hope to have my baby villages. Excellent! And that will go down here. And I need to break this gold ore, actually, in order to take the babies a bit further. So, I'm sorry, piglins. You've got to die. The time is over. Oh, he shot me. That wasn't very nice. And now for this fella as well. I had to box him in because he had a sword. <laughs> and I, I am scared of the piglins with swords. <laughs> there we go. Now I can break this stuff. And then I can put some kelp there. Break that. Put some kelp here as well. Bone meal that and break it. And there we go. That's the complete water stream for the baby villagers. Now I just need some glass blocks here. And this should mean baby villagers will go beneath the glass blocks. And then when they grow up, the heads will be stuck inside of another water stream. And I can carry them somewhere else. Right, I also need water beneath these composters. So that I can get some hydrated farmland here. So let's try and get some kelp action going here. There we go. Break these composters and we'll break those blocks too. Uh, there's air blocks beneath that. That wasn't too great. I'm going to need some slabs. Let's just kelpify that up though. Add the slabs and now I just need my composters. So I can place those. And there we go. Well, I've fully dug out the room now. I have all of the space I need for the villager breeder and the potato farm and the carrot farm. But I wonder what sort of design I would like to go for this place. I think we should go for a resource I actually have plenty of at the moment. So let's go for crimson wood. I've been chopping down a bunch of that while I was trying to make space for water. Crimson wood and shroom lights. So we'll have the logs in the corners here. And we need some light sources as well, so let's just add some shroom lights to the sides of the walls here. And then we'll also fill in the gaps with crimson planks. I actually need to be able to access the crops that the farmers end up farming for me. <laughs> so we'll dig these blocks as well, and we'll run a line of hoppers beneath that. And I don't think I actually have enough iron for that, so we'll probably need to go mining again at some point today. And of course, I can't forget I need a roof design. Is this a good roof design? I don't like it. I'm going to need to make some changes. So I've built another roof design over here, and I think I very much prefer this one. So I think I'm going to have to replicate this on the other side. And of course, I need a floor. So let's just remove this real quick, and we'll replace it with slabs, because they are nice and spawn proof. And of course, what kind of crop farm doesn't have dirt? We've got to add that. <laughs> Let's just add the hoppers in, or at least the hoppers I have access to. I think I'll be able to make a hopper line for at least one of the farms, but only one of them. And as you can see, this farmland is clearly hydrating itself, even in the nether, which I think is awesome. So let's go ahead and plant some wheat seeds, and the villagers for the villager breeder will just start farming away at their own leisure. Oh my goodness, everyone, we've hit a milestone. As you can see from the F3 screen on the left, I have hit day 100 of Project Nether Aquarium. This is a bit weird. Like, I've played this world so much, and I've progressed, like, not at all, because I've spent so long digging in the nether and trying to fill it with water. Like, I have zero enchantments, I have no progress towards fighting the Ender Dragon or anything like that. This world is progressing so much slower than my previous ones. Like, the Armless world, for example, I had so much stuff before I hit day 100. <laughs> now then, I need villagers, and I did actually trap a few in the village just over the other side of the hill. So, hopefully I can find them again. And luckily enough, there's one guy just out and about. So let's capture this farmer first. Would you care for... Do you care for work? Would you like to go up your staircase and enter the boat? And, oh. Oh, he's outsmarted me. <laughs> You're not supposed to go this way, mate. <laughs> um, please go the other way. Uh, just, just block that off there. He won't be able to go that way now. Right, um, 
Come on. Access your workstation. Come on. Get in the boat. You know you want to. Come on. Just w w one step further. Come on, dude. There we go. And I've just realized that I've been an absolute idiot. I was about to dig an entire tunnel to get this villager all the way from here to my nether portal. But I don't need to do that. I can lure them with a composter. It's as simple as that. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, um, he, he's not going the right way. Why? <laughs> oh, there's a nitwit over here too. That's not good. Go away, dude. I'm sealing your bell. That's what you get for not doing what I want you to. Well, he's coming over at last. This is most excellent. And I can get him in the boat for the last bit. And we'll just park this right in the nether portal. And break it. There we go. And now we can just boat this guy straight on into our farm. This is an excellent system. <laughs> I just need to do this with uh, the rest of the villagers that I have in the overworld. And then I can finally get started with a villager set up in the nether. Oh gosh, this is the scary part. <laughs> it's okay though, just don't right click the beds, don't right click the beds. It'll be all okay. So this is gonna be my bait villager. The carrot farmer's gonna try and toss his carrots to this guy. And we'll just try and block him into this little hole here. And now I can break his boat. And he should try and force his way to the composter, but it's not going to work. So hopefully I can just block him back in again. Let's just add the rail and the hopper minecart. Excellent. This bait villager is ready. Have fun being a baiter. And this guy is going to be our carrot farmer. There we go. Have fun being free, dude. And unfortunately... This is the last villager that I had access to in that village. The rest of them had book trades and whatnot, and I don't want to use them for this. So, I'm going to need one more villager in order to start a potato farm. But luckily, that's exactly what the villager breeder is for. Oh, how could I have forgotten? I need to build a ceiling. Yeah, I think this design will do. We'll get some crimson trapdoors in there to hide the aggressive shroom lights just a little bit. There we go. Now, in order to actually finish the potato farm, I need more iron. And I have barely any left. We're going to have to go mining again, everyone. My pickaxes have run dry. I'm on my last iron pickaxe. I've got a little bit more iron, but only like seven ingots or something. So, yeah, I'm going to need more if I'm going to craft a bunch of hoppers. I need them for my storage system. So, down we are in the mines once again. And I guess since I actually have mending on my diamond fortune pickaxe, I should actually be trying to repair the pick. That way, I can get some more use out of this thing. Ooh! Diamonds! Excellent! Ah, uh, here we go. We've got four diamond ores here. Are they real? Oh, yes. They are real. I've inspected them very closely, and you can tell that they are indeed blue shiny rocks. Isn't that just brilliant? Let's see how many diamonds we get. Please give me some. Ten diamonds out of four. I've more than doubled. Excellent. Ah, just look at this lovely iron. Getting a bunch because I've been able to fortune it. <laughs> Hello, diamonds. Hello. How are you doing today? So, I believe we have five diamond ores here this time. Let's see how many we get. <laughs> Only eight? Oh, that was a worse haul that time. That was unfortunate. And once again, we've come across some more diamond ore. These ones are deep slate, and these ones... It's going to actually pain me to mine them. <laughs> so, I've come across a fabled eight veiner of deep slate diamond. And unfortunately, I have to mine them. I want to keep them as their raw diamond ore blocks, but I can't. As they're so beautiful, but I need the diamonds. I need the diamonds for tools. <laughs> How many have we got? 18 diamond ores. Excellent. Now that we have more iron, though, I can finally finish this hopper line beneath where I would like to put our potato farm. And now all we need to do is wait for a villager to pop out of the villager breeder and... That farm should also be functional. And the other farm I would like to build in the nether today is a sugarcane farm. 
Now, I've been trying to restrain from farming up too much of this stuff because I wanted to be able to have my sugarcane farm within the nether, which is something that I don't think has been done before. So, I think we'll just have our sugarcane farm in the side of the wall here. I don't really have a better space for it at the moment. <laughs> Add our storage system in first. I think here will do. I might be over anticipating the amount of drops that I get from this with this amount of chests, but who knows, maybe I'll survive for a while. Hopefully I won't drown in this world. <laughs> now the sugarcane farm we're gonna go for is just gonna be the extremely basic generic one. We're gonna have pistons and observers, and we should be able to farm this stuff up automatically. So let's just add these observers in, and also the redstone. And now all I need to do is to place the sugarcane, and this thing should start working away. In order to place the sugarcane though, I need more water. <laughs> this really is a farm that doesn't belong in the nether, but here I am, making it work. I just need to bring the water over. And I believe that this is the correct coordinates just here. So let's just make our way down and hopefully we'll dig straight into our sugarcane farm. Oh god, there's a hoglin. Please don't get out of the water. Just stay in the water. Be, be stupid. Be an idiot. Please, just stay right there. I know you want to kill me very hard. Oh, no. There we go. I'm in. <laughs> um, place a cup there. And a little bit more so that I can bring it over to the next row. And there we go. That's our water source. And that means that I can plant our sugarcane. Just look at this. Have you ever seen nether sugarcane before? <laughs> I haven't. Now I also need to bring the drops up via a water elevator. And I can't help but notice that I don't have any soul sand. So that's something we're going to need to go on a trip for. We also don't have any ice. So... I'm going to need to make a silk touch pick at some stage, but I don't have proper access to enchanting that at the moment. Like, I have an enchanting table and no bookshelves. <laughs> That's not very good. But as you can see over here, our villager breeder has produced a villager. Which means that I can have a functioning potato farm. So, I guess I should probably bring him over to the potato farm and this guy will hopefully just start working away. There's another baby down there too. Right, come with me, sir. No, don't go back in your hole. You're not supposed to do that. Let's just place those fences back so we can't go back in. Um, I'm surprised he's not pathfinding straight to the composter. That is a bit weird. I might have to push him all the way. So let's just do it inch by inch, block by block. I will get him there eventually. <laughs> oh, he's almost in. There we go. Excellent. We now have our potato farm. Hopefully he'll just start working away. I am now on the hunt for soul sand, and that means I've had to leave the safety of the good blue stuff. And unfortunately that means I have to run into a lot of hoglins. <laughs> it's not exactly ideal. Oh, actually I should probably use this warped fungus. That should help. I'll be able to get rid of the hoglins with that. Can I see any soul sand from here? No? Okay. <laughs> uh, that's not good. I at least need a destination to go for. Oh, hello! I've just found another fortress. Excellent. Let's just get those coordinates on the screen there. I'll be able to come back to this in the future. I am just going to go in now, though, because I should be able to find a nether wart room. And we'll have to get some soul sand from there. As well as the nether wart. Which should be useful for water breathing potions, actually. That's a good thing. I should be trying to make use of those. <laughs> Just try and do this safely though. Don't have enchanted armor at the moment and that is something I'm a little bit scared of. There is a blaze spawner down there. That's cool. I should be able to make a rather interesting blaze farm out of that. Imagine that, a blaze farm with water. I'll be able to damage the blazes. I might even be able to get them down to one hit. <laughs> oh, I think I've just found another blaze spawner, okay. I think I'll make a note of these coordinates. Maybe I'll make a blaze farm out of these ones. We'll come back here in the future. Ah, here we go. I finally found the entrance to the nether fortress. Excellent. I should be able to find a nether wart room now. Uh, huh? Oh no! <laughs> the interiors completely failed to generate. 
Oh, so I don't know if you know everyone, but when the entrance fails to go anywhere, that means you've got no access to any of the nether fortress chests, no nether wart rooms, because the rest of the fortress just hasn't generated. That is really unlucky. Is there really nothing behind this netherrack here? Where does this go? Oh, there's some nether brick. Oh, this is... I've been on the other side of this. It's intersected with itself and it's just screwed up the generation. That's really unlucky. Wow. I guess this fortress was a bust. I had to travel far and wide for this. But I finally have access to some soul sand. Let's just block that off. I'm a little bit scared of the lava at the moment. But we have soul sand. Excellent. Let's just go ahead and pick some of this stuff up. There we go. Oh! Oh, that's another nether fortress. Excellent. I might be able to find some nether wart in there then. Okay, I'll make note of those coordinates. And I'll come back here at some point. Oh, oh, ow. Ow, that's toasty. Ow. Ow. I didn't mean to do that. I always forget that soul sand is a little bit lower than a normal block. Okay. <laughs> uh, please stop burning. That would be nice. There we go. Finally. Oh, I finally made it back home. There we go. Excellent. I am safe once again. <laughs> so let's just get our soul sand out. I can place that within our item elevator now. Let's just destroy that block and replace. And there we go. We've got some bubbles. Brilliant. And that should take the drops over our hoppers for the chests. Now the last thing I need is actually ice. So that the sugar cane doesn't stop on the nether rack, but I don't really have access to that, unfortunately. And there we go, sugar cane farm, um, relatively complete, almost complete. We're almost done with it. We'll be able to finish it off in the future, hopefully very soon. <laughs> I'm very happy that I have this now. I've been holding off and getting enchantments until I had this sugar cane farm running within the nether. So hopefully we'll be able to make some books and bookshelves out of this thing, and all shall be well. Just to give a quick update on uh, crop farms though, I don't have any potatoes. I do have carrots though, plenty of carrots and two spare villagers. I will make use of those at some stage. I would quite like to set up a trading hall so that I can sell the carrots and the potatoes and I'll use those emeralds to buy lots of quartz from other villagers. It's gonna be good. <laughs> For now though, I think I might be able to use these farmers as a way of selling potatoes and carrots. So let's just lock these guys' trades. Let's try and get the potatoes and carrots out of them. Well, that was quick. Thank you for cooperating, sir. You have been an excellent villager. <laughs> you have proved to be a magnificent specimen. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to have to make that the end of the episode though, so I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below, and if you'd like to see more content from me, then be sure to subscribe, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. But on that note, bye! Thanks for watching.